What's up, YouTube? Wanted to give you guys a quick update on the 90 gallon reef and talk a little bit about how it's been doing and what I've been doing down below in the sump. I did add my reactors and my dosing pumps, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what I did. I kind of had to move some things around uh, as far as the EB8 for the Neptune, which is the power supply and the timers and switches and stuff like that. So I did kind of have to unplug and plug and uh, you know I cleaned up the wire mess and stuff like that too but a little more about the parameters uh, tanks at 77 degrees pH is at 8.24 ORP is at 367 so it's all in good standings you know I think it's doing very very well uh, it is a young reef so the pH is probably being buffered from the sand bed and I am dosing at night, so it is also helping. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you down below what's been going on. Here's a far shot of it. You can see it's starting to turn more and more into a mess uh, the more stuff I add to it. But I do live in an apartment, so I'm trying to get everything under the stand. Um, don't have much space to be expanding and having fish rooms and stuff like that like most people have. Um, you know as far as having their sump in another room and you know I'm just trying to get everything under here and show people that it is possible and so far I think you know I have a pretty excellent system going uh, as far as keeping everything under the stand uh, my reef octopus 225 skimmer is doing a very very excellent job pulls out this nasty stuff every day I like keeping my skimmer cup clean so there's not too much evidence left uh, what's been pulled what it's been pulling out, but you know I clean my skimmer cup out at least every two days That's just to improve the skim mate, you know inside the neck of the cup uh, If you don't keep that clean and the algae and you know all that gunk builds up on it uh, The bubbles don't actually escape out of the top of the cup as well as they Will do if it was clean so you know it's good tip guys you know every two at least every two days clean out your cup and you'll notice the performance of your skimmer will improve uh, I do it when I change my filter socks so I go ahead clean my skimmer cup and I change my filter socks every two you know two three days you know sometimes you forget a day but at the most I'll go three days um, here in the sump or the refuge I'm sorry I added the channel morpha uh, this was added maybe less than three weeks ago it could not have been no bigger than a golf ball or a baseball and now it's definitely bigger than a softball so it's been growing very very good I do flip it and turn it around once in a while uh, just to get some growth around it and uh, keep it from uh, putting anchors in my sand because them long stringy pieces that you see hanging out start to grow into the sand bed so if you don't flip it once in a while uh, it'll get a hold of it and uh, disturb your sand bed when you go to move it so it's a good thing to, to remember to kind of shake it around once in a while Plus, when you shake your chadle around, you get some of the bugs to come out of it, and uh, you might feed your system or your display uh, with some of the stuff that comes out because it does harvest a lot of uh, small bugs and critters. Uh, another good thing about this sump was once upon a time when I put these rocks inside here, they were covered in hair algae. Um, I know it's probably what not the smartest thing to do was adding hair algae to my system, but it all disappeared. So I'm really not worried about it. I got the, like I said, I got the parameters under control. The phosphates are doing good. Um, here's actually about all the hair algae I have left, and that's due to my reactors. I added uh, two little fishies Fosband reactors. I got two of them coming down from my manifold. I took the center uh, barb and ran it down here, and I split it, and I ran this one to the phosphate and I ran this one to the carbon. Now, I'm using the Bulk Reef Supply ROX carbon. I did try putting it here first, and I put it inside a bag, but to be honest, uh, that stuff really needs high flow because my glass got dirty like within a day, and it was, it was horrible, so uh, I had to clean my glass, remove that carbon, and put some uh, fresh carbon inside this reactor, and I noticed within a day the tank was extremely clean. So uh, big ups for the Bulk Reef Supply ROX, I definitely approve of it, uh, it's some great stuff. 
uh, inside the other reactor, I'm using, uh, at the moment, two little fishies, Fosban, uh, what I've been, you know, using uh, before, but I am switching over to the bulk reef supply, uh, high capacity, uh, just so that I'm running everything from bulk reef supply. That place is, uh, is an excellent place to order your stuff from. I mean, they call it bulk reef supply for a reason, because if you buy your stuff in bulk, you're going to save yourself some money in the long run, and we all know what our tanks, uh, you don't just take them down uh, within a couple months, so you might as well buy yourself about a year's worth of supplies, you know. Uh, get a big old bucket of carbon, get a big old bucket of uh, GFO, because you know, uh, if you come into problems where you got to change these reactors out uh, every two weeks, say you're running a phosphate problem, so I would probably change my reactor out every two weeks just to power out the phosphates. So having the extra uh, GFO and carbon on hand is definitely going to be uh, useful in the long run. And, uh, you know, save you money on shipping too. I mean, if you have to ship yourself a little bit every couple weeks, it's not going to be a good thing. Uh, here I have the BRS dosing pumps running over to the bulk reef supply, uh, calcium and alkalinity. I also have the magnesium to go with it. Um, I'm doing about 30 milliliters a day uh, to keep the tank stable. There's not much inside my tank at the moment right now. Um, here, I did move some of the stuff around. I moved my exhaust fan down here on a timer uh, just because I had the exhaust fan hooked up to the cooling fan and the exhaust fan only turned on when the tank uh, went above 77 degrees and it's been pretty stable. So I switched that over to a timer. Uh, it's off for an hour and then on for like a half hour. I'm going to kind of tweak it out and play with it a little more uh, to see you know where it's needed as far as uh, keeping the moisture out of here because uh, if that fan doesn't come on it actually gets pretty muggy down here and I don't want anything to happen to my equipment so I'd rather have that you know small electricity running through that fan more often than risk uh, losing my equipment. Um, where else can I go from here? Uh, with the, as far as the dosing lines, I just ran them over here and put them inside this piece of egg crate, pointing down into the. Well, it's a little dirty if you can't see it. I'm sorry. Here's a better shot. Uh, it just drips in there. It's a high flow area, so you know it works. Um, I'm actually planning on putting some filter floss here uh, to promote a little more growth of copepods pods closer to the pump, so that uh, you know the tank can get fed more often as far as copepods pods making it to the top. Um, Back here on this back last barb, I ran it over to the back. It's coming down here and it's dropping back. Uh, excuse me, inside the skimmer section, you can see it. So it's kind of like uh, recycling the water, so I can hit the skimmer one more time before it goes up. Uh, it's been pretty useful. You know, it keeps good flow, keeps the detritus uh, from building up in the first section. Uh, so it's you know it keeps this section pretty clean. So when I do a water change, there's not too much that I have to do uh, as far as siphoning out the bottom. So it, it'll all it'll bunch it all up into a corner, and if I siphoned out that corner, um, you know the section stays pretty clean. And the same thing I did over here with the carbon reactor. I have the return going straight down, and I'm blowing on this side of the glass because the return pump is actually the the inlets on the other side. So this will kind of keep the I guess you would call this a dead spot, uh, keep it moving. And um, you know the flow switches are here, I had to move them over here because they were in the back corner, but the Fosban reactor was kind of blocking it. And you can see the flow inside my reactor is awesome. Uh, I got a nice steady dance out of it. And one thing to be careful about guys, if you do hook up these reactors the way I got them hooked up, uh, make sure you have uh, some type of a gate valve or ball valve up here. Because if you put too much pressure through these reactors, these little cheap rubber elbows will come flying out and you'll have water everywhere. And I almost experienced it, guys. I did get splashed in the face and that's why I'm bringing it up. So be careful. Um, I did buy a couple of the extra extension kits to replace the old elbows and I do plan on putting some ties around these elbows too to kind of hold them down so I'll keep them from popping out. Uh, what else though? I improved or upgraded my heater. Um, this was a Fluval 300 watt. It had that uh, gray plastic cage kind of going around it, so I cracked it off. Uh, I just wanted it because it's got that digital thing on there where you can see the temperature from the, from the heater as well. Um, 
you know, and I took this little rubber piece off of another heater and just put it on there uh, just to keep it from touching the acrylic. And this is my snail guard, do it yourself. I put it here inside this section and you can see it doesn't allow anything to kind of climb over into my return pump section. And that is why in here you see all these snails. Now the snails did an excellent job of cleaning up my fuge. My fuge was was getting out of hand. I mean, it was out of control. And the snails themselves actually had a little hair, hair algae going on them. And, you know, they cleaned each other off and I'm getting ready to throw them back in the display. Uh, the display needs a little help itself. Um, as far as that, I think that's pretty much a pretty good update of uh, what's been going on so far. Um, if you have any questions uh, about what I did, just go ahead and comment below. And happy reefing.